Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming Using Scala. We're getting close to the end of chapter 3 now, and in this video I want to introduce the concept of variables. So a variable, at least as a term, should be familiar to, to pretty much everyone from math. Uh, beginning at least with algebra, um, you have had experience with mathematical variables. Now, programming variables are not necessarily identical to mathematical variables, but there are some significant similarities to them. When we're programming, we use variables as a way of giving a name to a value. So, if we run Scala, and I want to do something like, let's say I wanted to find out how many, uh, how old you would be when you turned a billion seconds old. This is actually a fun problem from an astronomy class to give you kind of a, a, a feel for how big the number one billion is. Um, well, we could type in a billion, and then we could divide it by various numbers, like how many seconds there are in a year. Well, unless you remember off the top of your head how many seconds there are in a year, you could type in something like, well, there's 60 seconds in a minute, and there's 60 minutes in an hour, and there's 24 hours in a day, and there's 365 days in a year. Note, we are ignoring uh, leap years in this, uh, so it's not a perfectly accurate measurement. And that basically says that it's that you will be 31 years old, um, and then if we do a modulo, that tells you how many seconds into that last year uh, you were, and so then we could use that to figure out the um, uh, how many months, etc., uh, what month you would be in in your 31st year. So that works. However, this has a lot of <clears throat> somewhat random numbers. Uh, you know, they, they clearly have meaning, the 60s, the 24, the 365. Um, when you're programming though, a lot of times you want to give names, meaningful names, to the values that you use inside of a program. And the way we do this is to create variables. Now, Scala has, in many ways, a very regular syntax, and uh, there are a number of things in Scala that can be declared. And variables happen to be one of the things that can be declared. And all declaration statements in Scala start with a keyword that indicates what type of declaration it is, and then that is followed by the name of what you are declaring. So, it turns out that for variables there are two types of, there are two keywords. One is val, one is var. And we'll talk about the distinction between those in just a second. For now, I want to create a val, uh, and I'm going to call it 1 billion. And the reason is because I get tired of having typos and not counting the number of zeros correctly, etc. So 1. This says that I'm declaring a variable. It has the name 1 billion, and it is equal to the value 1 billion. Um, this is a slightly shortened form. I could also have specified the type of 1 billion. Uh, but as you've seen, Scala figures out a lot of the types for you. And so it is generally, in Scala, is considered appropriate style that if the type that Scala is going to figure out for you is what you want, then you can uh, leave off the colon and the type. So the name, names followed by a colon, you expect the next thing to be a type. That's just part of the, the standard syntax of Scala. Even though I typed this in as an int, had I wanted it to be a double, I could have put the colon double there and told Scala forcefully, no, I want one billion to be a double. Of course, in this case, I don't. So I'm going to go back and set it equal to the end. The name 1 billion. Uh, things to note here. First off, there is no space. Okay? Even though that is two words, uh, 1 and billion, I don't put spaces between them. So we don't put spaces in our variable names. 
You can't have spaces, that leads to the question, what can you have? What are you allowed to put inside of your variable names? And the answer to that is that you can include letters, numbers, and technically underscores as well. There are a few other things that are allowed that we'll talk about in the uh, second half of the book. For now, though, we're pretty much going to exclusively limit ourselves to letters and numbers. And there is one proviso there. You cannot start a variable name with a number. So I couldn't have done one billion. That's not an allowed variable name because it starts with a number. So it has to start with a letter or an underscore, and then uh, it can be followed with letters, numbers, or underscores. The other thing that might jump out at you here is that I used a lowercase o for the one and an uppercase b for the billion. This is a standard naming scheme. Uh, it's generally referred to as camel case. Um, and f camel case is used in quite a few different languages. It's, it's used very uh, rigorously in the Java programming language and it's also used very rigorously in the Scala programming language. It makes things easier to read. It is not a universal standard and there is nothing that says that you had, have to do things that way. It is possible to make a variable name that looks like that. Of course, as you can already tell looking at that, that becomes very hard to read. Uh, not only is it hard to read, it's hard to type and Scala is case sensitive. So if you made this into a variable name, you would have to retype it with that exact same uh, set of cases in future uses. So instead, we go with the camel case. For variables, you start off with a lowercase letter, and every word after that starts with a capital letter. That is the, the standard form of camel case. Now once we've declared a variable, what can we do with it? Well, we can use it. So if I just see the value of 1 billion, I can do that. If I said divided by 365, I get a number. So I can use this variable. Because this variable is an int, I can use it in any place, in any expression, that I could have used any other int. So whether it's an int literal, like 365, or an int variable, or we'll see later on, we can make other types of int expressions you know, they're, they're all interchangeable. And so these variables can be used any of those places. Now, another thing that I'd like to give a name to, so I've, in these two expressions up here, where I got how many years old you would be and how many seconds into that year you would be, I repeated a billion twice. And so one of the things, one of the reasons why we use variable names is you don't like to repeat somewhat, you know, these magic numbers because then there you have chances for errors. The other thing that I don't want to have to repeat is this. And so I could say val seconds in year and make that equal to 60 times 60 times 24 times 365. And so you can see that it's a little over 31 million uh, seconds in a year. Actually, the rule of thumb that I typically keep in my head is that there are 30 million seconds in a year. It's a little bit of an underestimate, but it's, uh, it's reasonably close. And so now we can see how many years old you would be by saying 1 billion divided by seconds in year. And if I type the names correctly, we get back 31. Now, what if I want to give that value a name? Well, age at billion seconds equals that. Okay, so now we've given the uh, number of years old we would be when we turned 1 billion seconds a nice name. And we can... Uh, play around with building an expression to get perhaps say what month you would be in. Um, so if I wanted to do that, 
And once again, we're going to average, yes, every month, months have different numbers of days in them. We'll assume 30, and uh, unless it's close to a, to a boundary, we would be accurate. Um, month at billion seconds equals, well, that would be 1 billion modulo seconds in year. And then that divided by the number of seconds in a month. Well, I haven't calculated. I didn't store that in a variable earlier. But we actually could. We could have uh, made a variable called seconds in month. And so, as you can see here, uh, you're generally in the second half of your 31st year of life is when you will turn a billion seconds old. So I've been using val for all of these. Uh, I mentioned earlier that there is also a keyword called var. So what's the difference between a val and a var? Well, the val of uh, is for something where the referenced value does not change. And so to, to help you understand this, you have to know of another type of statement called an assignment. So I've declared here a var called age, and I've set it equal to 7. One of the things about programming variables, and this is one of the things that makes them different from uh, math variables, is that when we say that age equals 7, it's only, it has that value for a certain period of time. And in the case of a var, that value can change. After you've been 7 for a year, you turn 8. And so this is what's called an assignment. Here we're using the equal sign to store the value 8 into age. Technically, you should think of a declaration like this. Age is like a label on a box. And that box has a pointer to some, uh, has a little arrow that points out to some uh, value someplace. In this case, age points out to the value 8. Originally, it had pointed to the 7. And what's happening here is that we're, we're moving where the arrow points. Okay? We still have one box, and it's named age, and that box hasn't changed. But we've made it point to a different value. On the other hand, the val declarations cannot be changed. Okay. If you try to do an assignment to something that was declared to be a val, you get an error like this. Now, you might be tempted to think, well, if I'm, there's something I can't do with vals, I should just make everything vars, and then I don't ever have this problem. In reality, it is safer to go the other direction. You should actually tend to use a val by default, make everything a val until you hit a point where you find that you have to change it. And then you should think about it. And if you really need to make an assignment and alter the value, then you should switch it over to be a var. The reason for this is because when programs get screwed up, it's typically because something got changed, or one of the common reasons is something got changed in a way that you weren't expecting it to get changed. And so it had a different value than what you thought it was going to have. Uh, and that messes things up. If everything gets declared as a val, the only place that it gets a value is right at the point of declaration. And so if it has the right value when it's declared, it can't be messed up later. Whereas when you declare things as vars, they can take on new values all over the place. And while logically it might not make sense for your age to jump from 8 to 42, if you've declared it as a var, that is allowed. There's nothing that prevents you from doing that. So as a style issue, you should prefer vals over vars and then use vars uh, when they are required. In the next video, 
we'll write another script, we'll see how, uh, we'll look at what's called sequential execution, and we'll have some vowels and some vars and let you really see the difference between the two in usage in a normal program as opposed to just playing with them in the RAPL.